of uh, general public, public or WSU uh, visitors here today because this was announced on the uh, WSU News that uh, Aziz can make this presentation today. So welcome to our non-regulars here. So Aziz Makani is um, uh, actually he's uh, an engineer. He's got a master's in electrical engineering. He's got an MBA. He's got a long and very successful career in high tech stuff. And he used those two years high tech and stuff. <laughs> And uh, about two years ago, he had this window of opportunity uh, to, to pursue another kind of dream he's had for a long time, and that was uh, his uh, application is as a referee for a soccer. He's been doing that for a lot of years, and mostly with um, younger children up to, I, I guess, from high school, probably does more than that, but kind of dedicated to an edutainment uh, kind of approach to make it fun and educational for kids who learn soccer, and he had this dream of uh, creating a board game, uh, and also electronic game, but right now we're talking about board game. And so uh, about two years ago, we started uh, putting this game together from his mind, and uh, with the graphic designer, getting this thing set up, and uh, now, I think as of this morning, he's the number one Google what, uh, search. search on uh, soccer games uh, in the world. So. I'm going to turn over to Aziz. He's got a nice presentation and plenty of time for questions and answers after his presentation. Thank you, Terry, for the glowing introduction. Uh, I feel honored to be here to share with you my experience, uh, my, my, my journey of Kickshot. Um, as uh, Terry mentioned, this idea kind of evolved from uh, something that I, I do, uh, refereeing. What I noticed was that the kids struggled with things like, how many of you, first of all, how many of you uh, have either played soccer or currently play soccer? Please. Okay. When, um, kids struggle with some really basics like throw in. When you throw in the ball, you have to have the ball all the way back, both feet on the ground. And they often do some, you know, some interesting ballet moves when, uh, when they do that. Um, instead, of, instead of having both feet on the ground, they have the leg up or you know, all sorts of uh, funny things. So I thought, you know, if I could create some, a, a game out of it that's illustrated, uh, that hopefully they can see what and how to do it properly, and also have fun playing it. So this is the result of it. Uh, what I want to do today, Jerry, uh, can you see this okay? Because I can turn the front light off. Is all right? You can, can you hit the slide presentation? Slide show. Yeah. <coughs> so what I want to do today is to introduce introduce where the company has been and where it's going. Uh, it will be very brief. And then the next thing that I want to share with you is some of the traditional funding sources and some of the sources that I have tapped into. And the, lastly, I want to talk about cost and pricing considerations so that you recognize you know, what goes into <coughs> pricing a product based on the cost. Um, many of you, or some of the, some of the people that may that may be saying, you know, my business is different from creating a board game, so none of this will relate to it. All I all I can say is that many of these things will actually relate to it. There is a, a lot of commonality in whatever business you do. Um, so trust me, you will see a lot of things that that cross over. Um, so where the company has been on a timeline is in March of 2012, it's truly late, late at night. I, I do do a lot, a lot of thinking at night. So an idea came about, and I've already shared with you how, what that idea is. My idea originally was just creating a board, a, a, actually a, a card game that could be, that could be soccer theme, you know, just kind of, I, I thought, if it was something around like maybe a com no, com no more complicated than Uno set of rules. So when I took the, the original concept out for testing, people said, well, if you're going to do a, a soccer board, soccer game, you should have a board. So my whole idea kind of went and kind of grew from that. And it's been a wonderful journey creating the, the rule set based on the input and feedback I received. So, um, from between March 2012 to February of 2013, I worked very diligently on creating the prototype, several different prototypes. This is one of the 
prototype. And then this is an earlier version of it. And uh, then it kind of evolved into this, which is the pre-production version. And then the final product looks like this. There's not much different, but there is some between this version and that, such as the QR code is in here. If I find it, QR code is here. The age, age group moved from four to five year old. And then uh, in June 2013, I received the first production unit, so I scrambled <coughs> to go out there and try to market it to the, the basic market that I thought would be where I could get the traction which was soccer tournaments and uh, soccer venues. And I quickly noticed something that I didn't really predict, which was I was getting a lot of sales from older people, like grandparents, uh, looking for gifts for their grandkids, something that's different from uh, gifts uh, such as a, a video you know, product. So then I had to make a, a small little pivot, which was to move into the, uh, trying to promote the product into the, the older, gen older generation. So I'm pretty active on the AARP um, the community to talk about the product and try to, try to uh, share my experience there. So, um, and then uh, for this year, where I'm going is I'm looking for licensing opportunities and what I call as um, looking for institutional customers. That means schools, um, MLS um, opportunities with the organizations such as MLS to either private li private label it or license the product, um, after school programs. So that's what my focus is. While I continue to develop the retail channel, I don't want to completely divorce myself from it but because the retail channel is important. Uh, it's actually helped me get through the first year, uh, but I also want to go out and look for institutions. So uh, in terms of funding, these are the tradi four traditional <coughs> um, funding sources that you, you could he you hear about, the four Fs. The four Fs are founder puts in some money, family puts in some money, friends put in some money, and then the last of all, fools put in some money. Um, I, you know, I'm not going to place anybody here. I, I, so what I've done so far <coughs> is the first three bullets. The, the first three bullets have contributed to it. But the way it's ha helped me <coughs> is creating a, a pre-prototype, then to this level and this level. Every one of these steps have added to my credibility, showing the resilience and showing them that I'm making progress. And so every time I, I can demonstrate progress, they're willing to put in a little bit more money and I'm able to show it to friends and they're putting in a little bit more money. So, you know, while the while family usually puts in money because they love you or, you know, they, they think that you, you can succeed, but also what you should recognize is that families are sacrificing a lot for you in that this may actually affect, you know, being the other person, their, their spouse or whomever would be, would be the only earner while you while you're pursuing your passion here. So you need to be careful and you need to be responsible and be dedicated and demonstrate to them and hopefully get them some benefit out of it. Um, and similarly with friends. Now with respect to friends, let me say this. Where I benefited is not only money but also the friend but uh, have also uh, friends and advisors, I would say, can provide to you in-kind benefit, such as an advisor like Terry is a small business development center advisor. He's been able to actually give me a lot of ideas and suggestions, made introductions to me, and you know, helped me get some exposure on the internet through articles, um, classes like this. So lean on them for in-kind, in-kind uh, contributions to your programs um, with respect to friends. Don't always count on money. You, they might be able to contribute in other ways. I have another friend, for example, that's donated uh, furniture for me, such as tables, um, donated uh, a tent for me to be able to show it at, uh, at tournaments. He hasn't given me money, but hey, you know, go 
those are the kind of benefits that can, because they trust you and they believe in you. So, um, in pools, I won't go into it. And then the next level is venture and angel funding. I have not pursued that yet. Um, the, the, the last thing that you probably have heard about is crowdfunding, and these are the sources, and some of whom are goodwill, uh, they because they want to believe, they believe in your project, they may, they may have donated, but one thing about crowdfunding that I would say is that 60% of the crowdfunding money comes from your own family and network. So if you're going to pursue the crowdfunding like Kickstarter project, Kickstarter program, trust me, you will need to lean on your, your um, network. Because just putting out a, a uh, uh, Kickstarter program doesn't mean that your money is going to roll in. You're going to have to help uh, your network spread the message for you and to you. Next slide, please. So here's where I want to spend some time is um, cost. Um, the next few slides that I want to show you is where the cost generally comes from. And I've categorized them into development cost, manufacturing cost, um, marketing cost, sales cost, and they quickly add up. So unless you're running a charity, you really need to be sure of one thing, and that is, what is the figure of merit that you need to do, you need to have to survive and to make it a sustainable business? And what I mean by that is how many, what is the factor of the cost that needs to be your sales price. So let me let me um, take a, a small little poll. If I was to sell this at twenty-five dollars, and and you don't have to give me an answer that's right, or don't be afraid of. If I want to sell it for twenty-five dollars, which by the way is the price, twenty-four ninety-nine. How much do you think the product cost needs to be in terms of factor? Go ahead. Uh, cost of goods sold plus your margin, whatever you want your margin to be. Okay, so what is, so if I was to say cost times two, three, four, five, how much do you think this would have to be? Uh, maybe like twice your cost? Twice? Okay. Anybody else do you want to take a chance? Four times. Four times? That's fine. That's good. Um, I have an answer for you, but let's wait until the very end and see if your answer will change as a result of what I'm about to show you. Okay. In terms of development costs, one of the one of the smallest one, but an important one, is <coughs> registering your name with the state. It's a one-time fee, but it still comes under the cost. The next thing that I've had to spend money on, and a lot of it, most of the money, has been with the artist, and rightfully so. I mean, he has to make a living, and I was fortunate enough to find a, an artist that's local. He is very talented. You know, he created some beautiful art, and he and I worked together really well, so it was a really good partnership. But he was paid uh, on an hourly basis, and uh, I paid him for not only uh, creating the, the images, but also getting a, a license from him, so I have the rights to the characters to create uh, whatever novelty products that, uh, that will come out of it. Um, the next two areas are trademark. I have trademark for the cake shop name, um, and also copyrights, and the domain name registration. Next slide, please. A manufacturing cost. This is another major area that you need to be aware of in whatever you decide to do. That is, on the manufacturing cost, I've had to pay for um, cost for producing the box. There is a uh, template that they use. It's a one-time fee. That, that also comes under the tool charge for the box, tool charge for the board. There's a tool charge for, so they, you know, they, they have to make a living. So it's only fair that they um, charge you for all those. And sometimes you might be able to get a manufacturer manufacturing partner that's willing to participate with you, but I didn't pursue that route. I, you know, I wanted to pay off and not have to give up my equity, but sometimes you might find a manufacturer who's willing to do that with you. Um, sample charge, shipment charge for prototypes. In this case, I was, I'm was i getting this manufactured at, um, in Taiwan, and uh, shipping charge for production costs. So it's a lot. 
starts to add up. So in shipping charges, because it's coming from offshore, these are typically what's put into it. Duty, <coughs> house bill freight, I mean, there's a whole laundry list of charges. They add up, believe me. Next one. Marketing costs, domain name registration, you've seen that, web development. Um, I engaged a web developer, um, but I do, once he created the template, once he created the basic, um, website, I have been adding more content to it. I, I've been adding more blogs to it. So my website is really, really active. But I still mean, I still keep him because from time to time there are things that I have to lean on that, that I don't know much about. You know, like for example, Google will change the tricks, you know, about how they index or how, how they do certain things. And uh, it'll, they'll start showing things like, oh, there's an error on your website. You know, the, then you gotta, you gotta figure out why is it an error? You know, you freak out and you try to scramble to try to get an answer. So I have maintained his services. Um, business cards, marketing flyers, copyrights and trademarks, display banners and buttons such as these, these are all part of the, the marketing cost. On the sales cost, last year I did some fairs, um, uh, I did some uh, craft fair, I did a, a craft fair down in Lewiston but one thing about those kind of affairs, that I did some tournaments. Um, one thing about those that I was able to leverage was the fact that I'm a soccer referee and I have connections with the people who are the tournament directors. I was able to get the fee waived. But if you can't waive the fee, you need to make sure that you know whatever you put into it, you at least get back some of it. So at least you understand what the ROI is before you, you engage in, in, a, in a, an event like that. I was also lucky enough to get uh, presence at the uh, Moscow Mall for nothing, um, and also at some of the local merchants for nothing. So, you know, you, you want to try to at least leverage those. Um, the next area is um, the, the products are sold on Amazon. So, with Amazon, it's been a wonderful experience. I knew nothing about how to sell on Amazon, absolutely nothing. You know, but, so for the first few months, I was pretty hesitant about going down the path because I said, oh man, I gotta do registration, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. But really, they make it pretty easy. Once, once you get on it, it's pretty easy to register, to uh, get, get the, uh, and it's wonderful. <laughs> once you get your product in there, it's, but you gotta, you gotta really maintain your website. You gotta make sure that uh, your website has good content so that people recognize it and get the word out and then they'll go to Amazon. So from the website they can go to Amazon directly. But Amazon charges you money, so nothing comes for free. Um, next please. So here's the answer to your question to the question that I asked. So 4X, whoever says 4X wins it wins a button, so be sure to get it. Um, it needs to be at least four times. And if you're not four times the cost, believe me, you'll be out of business. It won't be a sustainable business. Now, going back to the product and the price, the cost from the manufacturer is X, right? So if your price is fixed, in this case, I decided that it had to be $24.99 so the sweet spots I decided was were $24.99 or $19.99 or $14. So that leaves very little, very little margin to be operating with. So you can't really mess up. I mean, I wish that the price could be much higher, you know, $45, like some of the specialty games are. But this is not a specialty game. This is a game that's considered a, you know, a family game. So a family game. Can be $19.99 or $24.99, you might as well ramp up and go on. So 4X is a, is a, is a good, good target to set. So what my point here is that you need to identify what your price is and then work backwards from that and what your cost needs to be. It's, it's pretty high. I mean, the 4X is pretty high. Um, final thoughts for you are develop your network of friends, family,
and establish your credibility before you would even launch, you know, consider launching your endeavor because a lot of people can contribute to you, contribute to your services, and you're going to need them all. At the very beginning and throughout your journey, you're going to need them. Um, it'll be your advocates, such as you know, when I go into Terry's office and I see a kick shot game, that's the best advertisement I can get. Um, also, have a bottle of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> but the vodka is one of your clients too, right? <laughs> Develop the viability of the business, um, ex you know, and and really open your arms and accept the friends and families who are willing to provide you in-kind services. In-kind services, amazing. You know, they, they will be your advertising, they will be your marketing sometimes. It will spread the word on Facebook and some of the social network, and that's how the word gets out. The next one is, remember, kickshot.org is the website. Go to the Facebook and click like if you want. And I think Terry has something to say about that. Yeah. If you would like to, to earn some bonus points, and if you feel like you want to do this, I mean, do it, don't do it. But um, I think I can offer a bonus point for liking and maybe four more for saying something, if you want to. But again, you know, it's a bonus point, so it's totally optional. If you're not interested in the game, not interested in doing that, that's fine. And Aziz will track those, because I don't even know how to use Facebook. He'll tell me. I'm on several different, um, several different social media, Pinterest, um, uh, Google Plus, but I figured that Facebook is probably one that you're, you're all engaged in, so that's why I put Facebook in there. And uh, if you have any questions, by all means, the brochures and flyers are here. There's my contact information. The easiest one to remember is my name, period, my last name, at kickshot.org. And in spirit, in keeping it with the spirit of, uh, of uh, the World Cup is coming in less than 110 days. Now, a friend of mine came up with this tagline, which I thought was very amusing, very clever. You can read that. So I guess it's going to be in view? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think that's the last slide. That's it? Yes. Oh. I kind of went through this really fast. I didn't want to throw a whole lot of numbers at you. Um, I just wanted to get you a flavor for what the cost variables are that you need to be aware of when you're trying to price your product. Um, so if you have any questions, I'll open up for questions. Yeah, is there any way that your claims capitalize on the World Cup coming up? Um, my family thinks that I should go there <laughs> to, to Brazil. Um, I need to think about if, you know, a campaign, my current campaign, a marketing campaign that's, uh, that's along the, the the World Cup theme, and, and the, the one that my friend made is uh, this banner that will be going to the retailers that they can put out. So that's the that's the one thing, and then this banner you'll also find on the home page. And I'm getting some traction on Google. Uh, what was the biggest challenge for you going from having just an idea to the point you are at right now? Like, what was the, where did you take the biggest leap? In? <laughs> my biggest, the, the, the time that I spent was uh, writing the instructions. And I'm still not completely satisfied. You know, I had people review it. I was getting headache. I said, no more. <laughs> you know, but I had some a, a good friend, a neighbor. She, she was an elementary a special ed teacher. She reviewed it. And she gave me some really, really good uh, feedback. And just completely, re almost completely redid uh, the, my original instruction. Um, and that's probably, so, I'm completely not totally satisfied with it, so I have an FAQ, a frequently asked question tab on the website that people can go to, and you can uh, I encourage people to go to that. Are your uh, e-commerce sales higher than your retail sales? My e-commerce is definitely okay. higher. <laughs> Amazon is definitely higher. It's amazing. You know, I regret that I didn't send them enough of an inventory because I sold out two days before Christmas. So I missed out on the, I missed out uh, on the last you know, minute uh, purchases, and I also missed out on a few uh, after Christmas sale because the next time the inventory got to them was January second. So I missed out on the but it's it started to pick up again. Um, and so with respect to Amazon, 
a few costs that you need to be aware of is that you can ship them any inventory you want. They'll keep it, but they'll send you a bill. <laughs> yes. Is your game in English only right now? It's going to be on English. Okay. Yes. But your goals, I'm assuming, to, to explore foreign markets as yes, well. Yes. Yes. Very good question. I, I, um, I'm speaking with the, <coughs> with the uh, two people from Saudi Arabia that they're in Moscow to uh, do marketing for Saudi Arabia. And the website, you know, I get hits from everywhere. Everywhere. It's amazing. You know, how the website is getting some amazing results. I want to mention just two other uh, uh, WSU resources that we use. Uh, the Office of Commercialization, they take uh, intellectual property and bring it to, uh, to commercialize it. And the patent attorney, uh, uh, Travis Woodland, helps me with, uh, with copyright and trademark. There are things that Aziz and I had no clue you could trademark or copyright. Um, and other things you can't, but he, he is just excellent. So if any of y'all have ideas and are building with us, that's another resource that's free to your students. So who, who owns that IP? Is that, is that yours? Yes. And, and does WC give royal, or give no, a royalty no. arrangement? No, he, he just he just provides that service as you know to let you know what you can do. If you are a client of the commercialization office, you have to be a student, faculty, or staff, and he's not right now. He's, so he's he couldn't be a client. But you all have that access. You can go and and uh, get you know real hard advice from Trevor. But it's, and it's a free service. Do you look at moving manufacturing <coughs> closer to you to cut down on shipping costs or no? I mean, I, I'm embarrassed to say this. I really, I mean, I pleaded and begged the U.S. companies to come through, but, you know, first of all, I really had to plead and beg to get even a quotation from them. And many times they would respond things like, oh, we're on vacation for the next two weeks. Like, hey, man, don't you have another person who's doing this? Hey, I'm really anxious. And the last thing about the U.S. manufacturers is that they will say, well, how many hundreds of thousands are you going to buy? <laughs> so, my experience with uh, international you know, manufacturer, unfortunately, has been extremely positive. Um, they are very prompt. I, I would be emailing them. We did all we did all of this through email. I would be emailing them, and within minutes, I would get a response. They've got their manufacturing process down. Awesome. And, uh, do you have like a warehouse, or where do those get shipped to? Oh, it's very good. Ah, this is one of the uh, family sacrifices. Is that currently my garage? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But here's the hopeful thing: because I've managed to advance this through, um, because I'm able to demonstrate that hey, this is real. I've been able to get a friend, i.e., a neighbor friend, who's wealthy enough that he's willing to put in up to $50,000 for the next order, plus he has a warehouse, plus <laughs> they um, import products from all the uh, Far East countries, so he'll cut down the shipping costs by over two thirds. It's amazing. Wow. Okay. Wait, question, so other, do you have any other expansion ideas, I guess? Um, some, some up there. The product, the product line currently includes motivational posters, which features a character, a biography of the character, and a, and a uh, motivational message. So there's different ones as well. This one is Lionel Messi. Um, this one is uh, Pele, quotation. So you get the idea. Um, and then I've been able to uh, create, and these are pretty quick turn products, you know, based on the characters you've already created. I created a, a set of digital placements which comes in a, a package of four. the idea, showing the characters that they might actually love. The only regret I have about the dinner placements is that one of the reasons I created this game to begin with was to show the kids how to do throw-in, and unfortunately I didn't pick a throw-in character, but that's easy to collect. <laughs> and I've also created a, a, a dinosaur pack, but I don't want to market the dinosaur pack until I'm successful with this current set. A set of um, market analysis because those characters are all pretty, they look to me aimed at little kids. Yes. 
Um, whereas I wouldn't think these guys would be interested in playing even with the dinosaur. That's a really good question. Um, the premise of this game is that the kids can grow with the game. And so the instruction set offers three sets of three sets of instructions. There's a little kid's instruction that's probably good for between five to eight year olds. And then there's a, a ne next set of instructions. And it's all part of the game. So they don't have to go out and buy an expansion pack or anything like that. <coughs> they uh, select I think, a small set of uh, cards. And you can play the next level, which I call a warm-up game. Um, and then the, the third set, which is for adult version, which is uh, inclusive of all the reasons. So yes, I agree. Um, the characters are somewhat childish looking, but trust me, the game is good. Because I agree. <laughs> Uh, I actually forgot my question, sorry. Okay. I had two and I forgot them both. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give one as well. Um, what about home school? This is ed educational and entertaining. I know you were talking about looking at home school. How is it entertaining? How is it educational? Other than how to play soccer? Yeah, that's a really good question, by the way. Why is it so, why do I think that it has educational value? Beside, beside uh, educating the, the soccer community. The reason I think is because, one, you can show the characters and you can show the kids to uh, hopefully motivate them to illustrate. They, they can see, hey, you know, if I'm artistic enough, maybe there's a market value to it. Uh, they can take the um, concept idea of the, taking a concept into a product. Uh, how do you do that? So the kids can be shown that this is how you, the, the step that I went through would be ideal for them to, to recognize that this is how you do it. The next thing is there's, I've incorporated statistics into uh, the game. So roll of dice, there's risk and reward. So if you're trying to teach kids on applied uh, statistics, they can teach them to do that. And then the last thing that I have is on the website, each character has a, a very, very endearing um, set of biography. They have a unique name, and uh, my daughter-in-law my daughter actually created this. Um, he said, really, uh, go visit the website. I'll, I'll read to you. Um, so they can act, so the teachers can actually uh, motivate the kids to learn about a country or a place where they came from and the culture of the country and the you know, foods they eat. So let me read to you this. Uh, Leonardo is the name of the character, Jaguar. Leonardo, famous for his fancy footwork, comes from, I can't even pronounce it, Neogin, Argentina. His all-time hero is Diego Armando Maradona and thinks that Patagonia is the most beautiful place in the world. So you can see awesome opportunity for uh, teachers to say, hey, write me a project about Jaguar. Um, learn about animal science. You just never know, you know, how and what would motivate a kid, you know, so they could learn about animal science, they could also teach them about the uh, country where they are from. And this is one thing that I'm doing is that when you scroll the cursor on the character in the near future, actually it will open up and tell you a little bit about the character, uh, about the, uh, the animal, and it will also uh, tell you about the, I have not incorporated that yet, but I have the basics. Um, have you tried reaching out to any big name soccer players for what? I would love it. No, I have not reached out to them. It would be awesome if I could get them. Yeah, I, I, I'm everything right now. You know, I'm the, I'm the web maintainer. I'm the social, social direct, social media director, marketing, sales, everything. So and Kyle has been very helpful. I mean, Kyle actually created the original um, website. So that's a really good idea. He's, he's talked about it a little bit in, uh, with uh, universities. I wake up every morning with a completely new agenda. <laughs> Whatever, please. Uh, go ahead. So it kind of sounded like you wanted to like move in the, the direction of like putting like Messi and those guys into it, but how would that like make the MLS feel? Because they're not associated with MLS, so why would the MLS endorse the game when it kind of has an international feel to it? I, I, 
I don't know, you know, if they can mutually uh, mutually coexist. You know, I don't know that they're mutually exclusive either. Um, I don't know where that would lead me to. But uh, I'm throwing the dice out there, and hopefully, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some traction. I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, kind of going with that question about the international appeal, I know like for our generation, or like how old we are right now, like that FIFA, like the game FIFA for Xbox is like, is like huge. And so, have you ever thought about maybe if this gains traction, you can make a board game that's like, it's like affiliated with FIFA, maybe partnership, and you can actually include characters like Messi and Pele and like all those guys? That'd be awesome. That'd be incredible. Like, yeah, that would be. I've not written to FIFA. I mean, like, occasionally I go there and I go, ah, and then I get distracted. <laughs> Now go to MLS and not get distracted, but um, so these are things that I would love to do. Uh, one thing that I am doing, um, speaking of in-kind uh, services, is that I'm engaged with both universities at Washington State. I've had uh, business students evaluate my um, the project and give me analysis and recommendations. And last semester it was awesome with Joe Lager. Uh, Joe, Harris's, yeah, Joe, Joe, Harris, Joe Harris's group, it was awesome. At the University of uh, Idaho, I have a, a sponsored projects to do mobile maps. So uh, there is a group that's, uh, so the level one will be um, on uh, Google Play end of this semester. And, uh, I like that idea, because we've got mobile apps with the, I love that. PlayStation. Yeah, Xbox 360 or like PS4, like that, FIFA. It's like one of those popular games. And like that would also be really neat, like you were talking about bringing into like the mobile market where uh, I know a lot, like a lot of younger kids are like into their iPads and stuff and they have apps. Like you can make it like a, like a virtual board game and make it an app. Yeah. You could also do that. Yeah. And you should, you should always ask, you know, what's your idea for monetizing that? How are you going to make money? And my current vision is that level one and level two are going for free, and level three is for the issue. Um, that's my idea right now. And level one is being um, completed at the University of Idaho. Any other questions? Fam remember, families uh, sacrifice a lot. They don't just give you money because they love you. I mean, that's always a good thing, but you owe it to them because they are sacrificing quite a bit. So if you're going to take family money, make sure you're in. So I thank you all, a great audience, and especially on these. Uh, for me. <laughs> and um, anyone, and like I said, I don't know, it depends on you know, what Wednesday is like. If you have a long weekend, um, you know, if you just sit around, don't have a soccer game to play on your Xbox, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even speak out.